too loud. I hear a little bit no feedback, yes? It's all right. A bit too loud, yes, that's what I, I thought. This is an Omni and it, it has a little bit of uh, feedback if it's not adjusted. Like this, is, it should be better, yes? Very good. So, uh, theorem. Um, recall first that we showed before the theorem, yes, recall. We showed that the, uh, we took the, the ribbon was uh, Z mod 2N product over Z mod 2 with a graph G, where G is an AD graph of coxeta N. Uh, the norm of the Laplacian of G was quantum 2 at the nth root of unity 2 cosine of pi over n. And uh, we took the fusion from uh, I alpha these were the numbers that you saw in the graph before, and uh, they were the image of the AN graph, and so, so they are a multiplication table. And they started with a one, and then a one, one to the neighbors, that's important. And then they continued. Yes, and right above this, there was a, so, if we look on the whole ribbon, it continued periodically with, what, so this was a one, 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 and then some other things. Then there was zero, the next row, and then there was a negative one here. A negative one, negative one. This will be important today. So this is the whole row is zero and okay. So this this row is i, yes. And then we took uh, fusion of uh, fusion of i alpha minus fusion of i plus two alpha and. This was the inner product we showed of uh, what we call the root, the projection, 2n times the projection onto the span of fusion of Kronecker symbol at i alpha. Yes, and this inner product looked like this. It was a two here. Then for the neighbors, it was a one, one. It's exactly the difference between this and this one moved by two. So today, uh, what I'll do is a classical crystallographic thing. Uh, but this is a part that we need. So here there are others. And here there's also a one and a one. Yes, the rest of the rows here are 0, 0, 0, and 0. Yes, this is a, whatever neighbors, this may have more than two, one neighbor and so on, but this is one for every neighbor. Yes. Okay, so this is a difference. And the inner product was exactly this fusion of i minus fusion of i plus 2. And so we'll call this, uh, so it means that this projection that uh, our, uh, uh, well, we should give it a name, new root. The module square is 2, because you can read it right here according to the theorem. 
that we proved last time. And uh, this is a new root of uh, at the point I alpha is equal to two always. And uh, moreover, let's observe the following. If we take two consecutive rows, then let's say we have E6 now just for an example. Now the, the um, each of them has uh, norm square is equal to 2, length square is equal to 2, and the inner product here between these two, according to what we proved last time, should be equal to 1, yes? This is the inner product, so this is the inner product in uh, products of the root at this point with every other. This is a table. Clear? Yeah. So the inner product with itself is 2. Yes, and it comes out of this difference here, these two things shifted. And the inner product with the, with the neighbors on the graph is one. So, um, so the inner product with, uh, uh, of neighbors for neighbors. That means that there is an edge. And otherwise, the inner product is zero. Yes? So this is not quite a system of uh, simple roots. What do we need to do? Hmm? Yeah. So now, the, all the normality, everything is fine, except that the inner product for an edge is one, yes, we need to take it to be negative one, yes? So we do this by taking the negative, negative of one of the rows, yes? So you get the negative on the ribbon if you go uh, n, half the ribbon away. So it means that the, uh, the simple root basis, so the simple root basis is, consists of points which are at distance n minus one from each other. So these are simple, so a simple root, root basis consists of points on levels n minus 1 apart, on two levels n minus 1 apart. Yes, and uh, so uh, simple root basis means uh, this is a convention that the inner product of uh, A with B is equal to uh, a 2 Kronecker of AB minus uh, the Laplacian between A and B the number of edges. Since the inner product was positive definite, we projected on a Euclidean space, it means what in terms of operator theory? 
means that this two times the identity minus delta is positive definite, yes? So the matrix two minus delta is positive definite. And this is, uh, why would that be? That's because if you remember the norm of delta was quantum two, which was two cosine of pi over n, which was less than two. Yes? So now we have to, we're going to uh, prove that this, uh, so we have this way the simple roots. We should also uh, show the dual before we go into the theorem. The dual is very important. The idea, uh, once again, the idea was of uh, Weil's program was that the um, weights are, or give, give eigenvalues as in a product with a weight for the diagonal. of our matrix. So roots are the eigenvalues of the adjoint representation that is the algebra acting on itself. And there is a quantization which is the, the inner product between uh, any weight and any root is an integer. And this defines a weight. This is so that the representations can be in integrated to the uh, uh, to a circle on the diagonal. For the differential rep to be integrated. That's what gives this quantization condition. So now our roots are on the ribbon. A vector on the ribbon is, is, uh, consists of numbers on the ribbon which are biharmonic. And uh, well, these linear combinations of, uh, of fusion. So, uh, so any integer valued function on the ribbon, which is biharmonic, is a weight. So weights for our weights are integer valued biharmonic functions on the ribbon. And of particular interest is a dual basis. If you have the simple roots defined as mentioned there, the simple root basis that is as open as possible, there is there are the dual weights which are as small as close together as possible. Yes, and we should have uh, in a product chronic a symbol with this. So now, if you have these are n minus one. Remembering that the longest essential path 
has length n minus 2, how do you construct functions which have in a product uh, 0 with everything except for 1, which is 1? Can you see? They're exactly the pictures that we had before the fusion. So if you have, if you take a point, uh, one of the simple roots, and you take fusion, fusion from simple roots, if it's above, you take it downwards, and if it's below, you take it upwards. These numbers. And this would be the, uh, this is a dual basis. Such a, such fusion has zero on its row, as we mentioned there. Yes, because you multiply with the identity here. Yes, so it has, and here it's too short to touch the bottom one. Yes, so it has, it will have in a product zero with everything except with a corresponding root, yes? So these are the fundamental weights, they're called. And the nice part is that we'll have these uh, fundamental weights, such fundamental weights in the higher case as well, which will start very soon, the higher case. Okay, so these are the weights. And now, uh, let me if you have any questions, please ask. There's also an audience uh, microphone, so so uh, okay, but we. Uh, okay, one more observation now. We have shown before that the fusion is biharmonic. Yes, this came out of its associativity. Namely, we took home from uh, sigma i tens uh, sigma one tens uh, alpha to beta. Yes, and if we paired it like this, we got the neighbors of i. And if we paired it like that, we get the neighbors of alpha on the graph. Remember, that's how you define the graph. The graph was a Cayley graph. So this is really a product of Cayley graphs, and, and because of this is biharmonic. So you see this biharmonic property is absolutely fundamental. It comes out of the fact that we deal with tensor products. Yes, now, now uh, on the other hand, if we take two consecutive levels, two consecutive levels, then we can start fusion from a point on the lower level, alpha downwards, fusion. And this would have zero up and on this level. So we can get, so there exists a biharmonic function which has zeros everywhere and the one at some point alpha. And now we can start also downwards, we could proceed also in other ways, but you can start from this row with a one here. It may have things on the second row but those you can erase with what you did at the first step. So the conclusion is that for any point 
on two consecutive on the, the two consecutive levels. There is a biharmonic function which is one at a point and zero elsewhere. So on the other hand, if you know If you know uh, two consecutive levels, we can compute all others inductively by by harmonicity. Two consecutive levels of a by harmonic function. We can compute all others. Yes, because each of them is a sum of the neighbors above minus a one, two levels above, yes? So the conclusion of these two is the following theorem. Um, the uh, by, by harmonic functions are the span of fusion and have dimension the number of points of G, of the graph G. So if you are on the graph E8, so in particular, what we found there in the first part was a basis, which is exactly a simple basis from uh, the usual texts in, uh, in uh, Lie group theory. And now uh, let's uh, start the proof fast. Any questions here? So we found this way the dimension and we have found the generators. So um, here's now the proof Le uh, theorem Let's see first of all what we have. What we have are on the ribbon, we have simple roots. So we have roots within a product exactly given by the two times the identity minus the, by the Cartan matrix, two times the identity minus the Lopassian of the graph. Yes? And we want to show that all of the, the others are obtained from this by reflection. Uh, the only thing we know really is a norm of every uh, root that we constructed. So let's call them roots, but uh, rather than new roots or something like this. The, uh, so uh, the theorem is the following now. Uh, let, okay, let, uh, oh, I think we, we need one more definition here. The root lattice, consists of linear, linear combinations of uh, uh, simple roots with integer coefficients. Okay, and now theorem. Let uh, A 
be non-zero in the root lattice have the norm of a square equal to 2. Oh, be in the root lattice, sorry. Uh, I need a stronger, uh, slightly stronger version of this. Then, then the norm of a square is bigger than or, than or equal to 2 and if the norm of a is equal to two, norm of a square is equal to two, then a can be mapped into a simple root by a succession. of simple root reflections. Which mean, in this theory, reflections in the hyperplane orthogonal to the root. A simple root. So this is our main theorem. Once we do that, it would follow immediately that uh, since our roots have length square root of 2, is that they can be brought into a simple root by simple root reflections. Yes? And let's, uh, let's start. Think fast. So, uh, uh, okay, so first of all, let's observe the following. Um, assume that uh, the A square is equal to 2, then So uh, let me write here that we work with roots as expressed in the basis of simple roots. That's the idea. Okay. Assume that a square is equal to 2, then the coefficients of uh, a in a simple basis have all the same sign. Sport is connected on the graph G. So, for instance, a typical route for the AN case would be something like one 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 zero 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 or so. You can all have a change of sign. So proof 
uh, if if the support is not connected by that we mean that it's interrupted by a zero then um, G splits into two subgraphs <coughs> and uh, the norm of A is two square is two on each component. And that's a contradiction. Similarly, if um, a split A into the part, the part with sine plus and sine minus, Yes, these will be on subgraphs and uh, apply inductively the theorem on each, this part of the theorem on each, and note that uh, the inner product of two neighbors, x, y, these are points, simple roots, neighbors, simple roots. This is negative one, x, y. So it means that if you split here into the positive ones, the negative ones, then the norm, the norm together, the norm square is bigger than the sum of the norms. Of the components, that's because the, the inner product between two here is negative. Yes, between two neighbors. So, uh, okay. Now let's continue. Yeah. Uh, just a second. Yes. Well, the, thank you. So the question is whether uh, the lemma was to show that, uh, that all the sides are the same. So what I was saying is that if you have, look, for instance, if you take this graph just as an example, if you have here plus one and a negative one, yes, then the inner product of, uh, so let's call this part uh, x, uh, I mean U and this part V, yes? So U, U is uh, two in this case, these are simple roots, yes? V, V is two, and U, V is now, uh, U, V is plus one, because the simple roots, the inner product of simple roots is negative, so if the signs are opposite, and it's another one, yes? So it means that, the, the, that u plus v square is going to be bigger than two. Yes. Yes? In any oh, case. Okay. Yeah? Sure. We should uh, write that example now. Okay, uh, let's continue then. 
So it means that if you have something of norm two, then all the signs must be, must be the same, yes? And we assume here without loss of generality, assume because a reflection, so since you can apply it self-reflection, self-reflection, which psychiatrists tell us is a very good thing, uh, self-reflection uh, should uh, map a root into his negative. So with this, we can assume, assume that uh, all coefficients are positive, are non-negative. Yes, for our root. And then, um, okay. So uh, now we look at uh, what a reflection does. So we are at a, uh, at a node of our graph. So we are at a node X, and this is Y1, Y2, Y3 neighbors. So this is on the graph G, for instance, E8. Yes? So X is a simple root, and Y1, Y2, and so on are neighbors. And now the inner product of X with YI is negative one. Yes, so graphically this would be X and this is yi, yes? And now, if we make the reflection, so the reflection into x, let's put it in full, reflection into x of yi is equal to what? It's yi plus x, yes? Is that clear? This, the angle here is 120 for simple roots. Yes, the reflection is a reflection in the hyperplane orthogonal to x. Yes, so the reflection of yi is yi plus x. And of course the reflection into, or into x of x is negative x. Yes? So, if we have now coefficients, coefficients for our A, for our root lattice point, yes, uh, let's say that the coefficients are uh, for the same points. They are A0, A1, A2, a3. Yes, if we apply the reflection in X, what is going to happen? Here A0 becomes negative A0, right? And because uh, each A1 would contribute, you see the coefficient in Y of Y remains the same, it's still one, yes? So the only contribution of this is that y contributes with a one to x, yes? So the reflection, so if this is a, the reflection of x into a will have the following coefficients here. The same a2, a1, a3, and here it will be negative A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus A3. This is with the dots here depending on how many neighbors there are. Yes? So it's negative the value minus itself plus sum of neighbors. neighboring coefficients. Yes? 
So now what we want to show is that at least one of these inflections will lower a coefficient, will make the co a coefficient smaller. Because then by induction we can apply reflections till there's only one coefficient which will have to be one. Yes, so find, so lemma, there exists a reflection which lowers a coefficient strictly. Now, what does this mean? It means that minus A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus, yes, is equal to, is uh, strictly less than A0, yes? Or that A1 plus A2 plus is less than 2A0. I knew that it is absolutely impossible to finish the blackboards of, of this auditorium. Okay, so proof, if not, For every coefficient, or not for every, every coefficient of A is, for every coefficient of A, the sum of neighbors bigger than or equal to twice for any coefficient a i of a, the sum of neighbors is bigger than twice a i. Yes? Then, the norm of the graph of delta g will be bigger than or equal to two which is a contradiction. The norm of the graph was less than two, yes? Remember, that's a fundamental thing, so, uh, and this uh, ends a proof. The proof, as we reflect, as we keep lowering coefs, coefficients by reflection, by simple reflections, until a single non-zero one remains. And of course, that one must be one. because that's a simple root which has norm square two. Yes? So this is a proof. You just keep lowering the coefficients. And this is exactly the only thing, just about the only thing we knew about our higher roots. Yes, was what we said at the beginning, that if you took two rows apart, n minus one apart, you got exactly simple roots. So you got roots which have inner product uh, negative one if they're neighbors, and uh, zero if they're not neighbors, yes? And with themselves inner product two, yes? <coughs> 
So, <coughs> and the only other thing we knew was a norm of this, which we proved by the proof from last time. We proved that they have norm two, because also in a, that was in a product with itself, was two. And what we showed here was that in a, uh, for a simple e group, the only thing which has norm two is uh, is a root. If you if you are on a, on a graph ADE. By the way, if you're not on a graph ADE, uh, yeah, we have five minutes there. So if you're not on a graph ADE, then you can uh, then you, you still use a ribbon. So I use the ribbon uh, for, uh, for instance, for, so you know that the graph D4, which is, by the way, exactly this. These are the roots of type D4, yes, with one at infinity. What you see here, you don't see the origin. So this is a sphere S3, and what you see are the tips of the roots on the sphere S3. The sphere S3 is projected stereographically uh, onto R3, yes? So what you see here is a unit sphere, exact, not unit, but l exactly size square root of two radius, yes? And these are the tips of, uh, of the roots, yes? And if there is a segment, then the angle between the corresponding roots is 60 degrees, the inner product is one. Yes? And if you have two segments, like from here here, the angle uh, is uh, 120, so it's minus. Uh, if you have three segments, it's a negative of the root. And if they're not on the same circle, then they're orthogonal. Yes? But now the graph D4 projects this way onto the graph, uh, I think this was, known to James, who made once this picture, the, the projects into something smaller on uh, uh, once you build the roots, yes? So now the graph G2 looks like this. You have, these are the usual roots of A2, that's 60 degrees, and you add the mid, you are these, the middle of the triangles. Yes, so this is a system G2. And, uh, and the simple roots would be, for instance, this, this one, and this one. Yes, they're as open as possible, yes? And these are the weights. Now, here I should give you one thing which would, uh, in case you work with them, this is called a core root, and it's three times bigger because of that factor three from projection, yes? So the core root is bigger, and the inner product of, these are the fundamental weights, the inner product of the fundamental weights with the core roots are one or zero not with the roots, yes? And now here's how you find them on the ribbon, both roots and core roots. If you start essential paths, so you simply use essential paths, I mean biharmonic functions, which are constant on the three legs, yes? And for instance, one of these is one, 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 two, one, 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 uh, one, remember this one, yes? This one works for G2, so for G2 you make a ribbon like this, maybe you add them up, depends on your convention, and you're going to have here one, three, two, three, one, yes? And the other one, you start things from here, and then zero. So the other one, you start from this one, one, one here, and you're going to have three, and so on, yes? So as long as you take the same values, is the same. And look what happens on this ribbon. This three is equal to one plus two. Do you see the biharmonicity here? 
3 is equal to 1 plus 2, but 3 plus 3 is twice, is 3 times this, yes? So in one direction you have to multiply the sum by 3, yes? By exactly that factor root co root. This factor you find it in the, uh, in the Cartan matrix, but it's, uh, so this is, so, so uh, we have not restricted the generality at all with a ribbon. We can do uh, uh, the, both uh, the ADEs and the others. Any questions? So now what we have shown is that, uh, yes, go ahead. You need to let that warm up. Well, now you construct a simple root in your ribbon. Yeah. And then you construct the root lattice using the positive sum, uh, using the just sum of integers. Yes. And then you use, actually you use a non-trivial fact to show your biharmonic functions are the root system. That means to construct those roots using biharmonic functions, it's still, it's still natural, but it's indicated in the example you, you given at the beginning. It's the E8 example. Essentially, that's because the two, consec two consecutive level, level right. uh, for two consecutive levels, the number appeared in two levels are all positive integers. Yeah. And actually, you use that fact. And that fact so far is proved by example. Which one? That the numbers in two consecutive levels? Are positive numbers. Uh, no, 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 I took the, the very specific one. I took a one level from which we started the fusion. The fusion is exactly... No, you, you, don't, you don't really want to construct all the roots. As, as sums, you really want to construct all the roots as biharmonic functions. But, but we have taken them. They were biharmonic functions. So our roots, look what, what they were, were, they were... So we had here the simple roots, simple, simple. And our roots had a two somewhere, yes, the inner product with itself, and had here all kinds of inner products with the others, with the simple roots, yes? And the statement is that these have norm two and they, they uh, since the, these are bases, yes, we get here the coefficients in these bases. Yes, uh, you, you have positivity for those coefficients. And no, the, the rest was proved in the crystallographic case, just working with simple roots. If you have a system of simple roots, uh, so these were clearly in the root lattice because there were linear combinations of uh, simple roots with integer coefficients. No, it's not correct to compute the inner product with simple roots. You need to compute the inner product with the due. So you need to take two consecutive level. So. Well, we could discuss it maybe afterwards. Yeah, we could discuss it afterwards. And this theorem is not really for biharmonic function. This theorem is purely for semi simply algebra. For semi simply algebra, exactly. But what we know in this case is that our, the roots that we have constructed have, the objects that we have constructed are linear combinations of simple roots with integer coefficients. Yes, I mean, just so you haven't finished your proof at this point, you still need to go just a little bit more. It's not that hard. A little bit more, yes, just yes. No, more. there is a little bit more, I can see. There is a little bit more in the sense that, uh, just to prove that they are in the root lattice. Exactly, yes. That's it, yes. And it's not that hard to use your previous result to prove that, but just uh, I want to say, yeah, yeah. this theorem is still not finished. It's not, uh, yes, but this is a major part of it. I mean, this is the, uh, that's the main argument. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Yeah, so the thing that, uh, that uh, we'll have to, uh, yeah, there is indeed an observation. Uh, the, um, what one has to show carefully is that uh, the roots that we have built as projections, yes, they, they are uh, sums with integer coefficients of those, uh, 
of those simple roots. Yes, that's uh, that's a thing. Yes, so uh, okay. I mean, by by harmonicity. Yes, uh, this follows immediately, by the way, by by harmonicity, but I should have mentioned it. Because a third row of roots, the roots themselves are by harmonic. I mean, the sum of uh, one root plus the one two above is the sum of the neighbors. Yes, so based on that, uh, one can. Uh, one can prove it. So this this was a real observation. Now what happened was, as you see, my voice is uh, short. Yes, so I couldn't sleep uh, this uh, morning at 3 a.m. So I made up this proof basically in my sleep almost. So uh, so in one sleep, one uh, there are some things which look obvious, like the sum uh, which needed one more sentence there. So. So, but uh, by and large, it uh, worked. The problem with things that you make in your sleep, which I do not recommend, is that they may only work in your sleep. So, uh, which could be a problem. Okay, we stop here. So anyway, we have now that our ribbon is exactly the root system as constructed in the classical books. And it's, of course, uh, way simpler, because otherwise you'd have to take a one-semester course in, not quite for this, but still, uh, so it's, it's way simpler than usual, yes? And moreover, it can be generalized to higher, to the higher case, because it's all based on fusion, yes, on tensoring, and of course, here we tensor only representations of SL2. If we tensor representations of SL3 or SL4, we get a higher case. So that's a strategy. Very good. Thanks. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, so that's, uh, that's a proof. So the proof is uh, that the roots themselves are biharmonic. OK? Which means that the sum of two roots like this is the sum of the neighbor's roots, uh, neighbor, uh, neighbor roots on the graph, yes? So based on this, the, uh, what you said follows. Yeah. The coefficients are, by the way, not the inner product, not what's shown, uh, 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 not the inner product with the simple roots. They're the coefficients of simple roots, which are different from the inner product of simple roots. Uh, maybe you should put a note there that coefficients of simple roots are not the same with the inner products of, with simple roots. Yes, because uh, if I was tempted to, I mean, I slipped a couple of times into, into that. So what you find above, uh, at the simple roots when you take a root, yes, is the inner product of your root with the simple roots, yes? The coefficients of simple roots are different, and that's what I used in the proof. So the proof is finished. Good. Thanks for the... But with that observation, it's enough. Yes, right. Yeah. Previous result of both. Sure, sure. Yeah, but I proved the only other observation was is that the roots themselves are. If you end up with this theorem, this theorem is a well known result in classical representation theory. Mm hmm. You just prove some result in classical representation theory, and why does something higher? Right, right. I have no idea because I never learned the classical representation theory. It, it seemed to me that this thing should be known. So, it is but, known, but your proof actually is very beautiful. <laughs> this is not the proof I know before. <laughs> proof. Oh, then it happened because I made it up at 3 a.m. So, um, um, well, this proof also has some minor mistake, but not big, big, big deal. Just, yeah, I, yeah. I cannot say assuming a square a norm. The norm of a square is two. You, you should say we take a whose norm is minimum. Yeah. And then finally, you will say 
Well, with this one, no, if it's, if it's right. But here, uh, no, that, that's if you want to make the theorem self-standing, I understand. I had in mind a very clear case because this, these roots had norm too, so no, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't know the smallest number is 2. Right, right. You really say at the beginning, assuming a norm square is some number, say, n. Yeah, n yeah. N. Then finally, you show that n is the smallest positive number. Smallest positive number. Then a must be the simple root. And then at the same time, you proved that n is 2. Yeah, the main thing here was this reflection that lowers the coefficients. Now, once you do that, you bring it to a simple root. So it, it is whatever norm. Uh, I mean, you didn't really, I don't think you, you even, uh, right, the minimal is, is good. Because you didn't really use the, the, uh, the fact that it's two, yes. The proof is correct, yes, yes, yes. No, but I mean, I didn't have the luxury, you know, by the time I woke up, I was tired. So, uh, it's not last night, it's this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, so, so uh, that was uh, the thing. But as a result, I mean, I was afraid that, uh, you know, I would not be able to stand up uh, with gowers. Uh, but I should be okay with your coffees. So, I didn't have any coffee either. So. Okay, thank you, we're, we're done, so.